Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, friends. God gave me a mighty word this morning. And, and don't worry about me. I can drive and talk, guys, okay? I'm looking. It's no different than talking on my cell phone. God gave me a mighty word. And God wants to know why. There was a big event that happened here a few weeks ago. And people planned for this event. Two and three weeks out. Some planned months out. And these people came to town. And let me tell you what some people did. Some people adjusted the way they spent their money over the, the uh, past few months for this event. Or the past few weeks. Because they knew they got to need money to pay for this big event that happened. They went out and bought outfits. They went out and uh, got their hair done, the nails done, new shoes. They went out and got new outfits and got the hair cut. They went out and they got babysitters. They paid for babysitters. They paid for, some people rented a car. All for this big time event. Those, some of those tickets range anywhere from $100 to all the way to $600 that people paid for. And we're not talking about people with money. We're talking about people that make, you know, that, you know, that's on paycheck to paycheck. God wants to know why. God wants to know why that people will go out to a club and want to be seen so bad so they would get to the club early to get a table and spend $500 on a bottle just to be seen by people that don't even care about you, don't even like you. God wants to know why. $500 on a bottle. God wants to know why you would spend everything on all the things of this world but when it comes to tithing and giving your offering you search through your wallet and you go past the hundreds till you get to a 20 or a 10 and you put that into your offering plate God wants to know why God wants to know why that he's constantly third and fourth in your life when it comes to everything else God wants to know why that people value people like Beyonce and Jay-Z over giving to his kingdom. Do I have a question for you? If you were sick right now and you got diagnosed with cancer, do you think Beyonce and Jay-Z can heal you? If one of your kids got locked up and went to jail, do you think either one of them can be able to bail your kid out of jail or put a for the uh, judge to sentence a smaller sentence. But yet, we constantly put other people before God, and God should be number one in our lives. God wants to know why should he take your life to the next level? He see you praying. He see you asking for a promotion. He see you asking for more money. He see you asking for a miracle when it comes to your finances. But he wants to know, will you give a thief a key to your home to go in and break into your home and steal everything out of your home? So why should he give you the keys to unlock heaven for you to go in to steal for him more? Yeah, the Bible said, how you robbed me with tithes and offering. That means when you don't give back 10% plus offering to God, you're literally like sticking a gun to him and robbing him because the tide is holy. That's a mandated 10%. It's not an option. It's not whether you have whatever you have left over. It's the first thing you pay when you get paid. Tell your secret, guys. God is not going to make adjustments for you. We are to make adjustments for him. He's not going to change. God, Bible said God changes not. So we are to make adjustments. Like... A lot of us made adjustments to be able to go to this Beyonce concert, to be able to go to it. And some people spent as much as six or $700 on that concert when you consider the outfits, the hair, the nails, the shoes, the tickets. But yet, you went to church that following Sunday, and you'd be lucky if you gave $20. God just wants to know why. And trust me, God knows why. The answer is, we don't value him. Because we literally, if you value someone, you will put them first in your life. Some of us drove to work today in stolen cars. 
Some, some of us is living in stolen houses. Some of, uh, some of us is wearing stolen clothes because we literally bit off more than we can chew on the house. So therefore you box guard out on your tithes because your, your mortgage is too much for your income. Some of us bought too much car because you box guard out on your tithes. So you can't pay your tithes because you gotta pay your car note. So therefore you're driving a stolen vehicle. Some of us is wearing stolen clothes because you don't know how to go to Marshalls or TJ Maxx. You got to go to the gallery and go to all these high brand stores knowing you don't have the money to shop there. But you do it because you want to be seen by people. Let me tell you something about being seen by people because I was there. I was that person that had to have the, the, the most expensive car on the road. But let me tell you, the more you fall deep in love with God, he will start putting a flashlight on everything in your life that's not, not necessary. See, it's okay to have a nice thing in life if you can still tithe and pay your offerings. But if you cannot tithe and pay your offering, then you need to scale back. Well, I know some people saying, it's easy for you to say you make a good living. Yeah, reason why I make a good living because I believe in tithing. And God convicted me to step up on my offering because I was the person that thought because my tithe was so big, my offering was, my tithe was enough. No, God wants the whole tithe and the offering because the offering is the indicator light on where your heart at with God. Tithe is mandated, but the offering is showing God on how much you truly love him because a person would give up his wife before he give up his money. So God used money as an indicator light to show you on how much you love God. God already know how much you love him. But the tithe and the offering, the offering especially, is to show you how much you love God. Because the more you love someone, the more you would give to him or give to her. So God wanted me to make this video for you guys to understand everything in this world belongs to him. So he can turn around your situation he can bless you abundantly with more income, but he is not going to take your life to the next level until you start tithing and doing your offering. And you can't say the preacher wants your money because I'm not a preacher. I don't have my own church. So God put this message deep in my spirit this morning because he is tired of seeing people asking him for more money, more money, more money, and you have yet to give an offering and a tithe out of the income he already gave you. God is not going to make adjustments for you guys. You guys are to adjust in him. If that means taking out HBO and Showtime off your cable and going with basic, then guess what? That's what you need to do. If that means that you need to uh, uh, take some of the minutes off your cell phone, and that's what you need to do. If that means you need to go from AT&T to Cricket, then that's what you need to do. You have to make adjustments for your God. If you want to see more God in your life, if you want to see more income in your life, you got to make adjustments to give back to his kingdom because everything is tied up into your giving and your, uh, your, your tithing and your offering when it comes to blessing you financially. Guys, I could never imagine I will make the money I make. It's only because of the grace of God. It's only because of my obedience to him to where he blesses me to financially the way he does. And he wants to wall you in your finances, but he got to trust you. God pays attention to your, what you give, guys. Don't think that God don't see you giving that dollar in church. The New Testament said that God saw the lady that gave two copper coins, which totally in a penny. And it said that woman gave more than people that gave thousands because she gave out of poverty. Guys, if you got to give out of your poverty to make your tithes, do it. God said, and test me and see that I won't open up the windows of heaven. So, hey, if you want to see big time adjustments in your, uh, in your, in your having, you got to make big time adjustments in your giving. Guys, I hope this message touched you. I hope it resonated deep in your spirit. But the only, in order for you to fully obey tithes and offerings, you truly got to fall in love with God. And the more you fall in love with him, you got to spend time in it in him with praise and worship and prayer and once you fall in love with him you're not going to have a problem giving because God wants you to give with a cheerful heart not with a grudgingly heart so my goal and God goal but God goal not my goal God goal is for you to give out of your heart give from your heart believe in him trust in him 
and tithe and give him his offering so that boy, his hands will be untied to truly bless your life and to take your life to the next level. Have a wonderful day, uh, Facebook. Have a wonder, wonderful day, friends. Remember, God loves you. He wants to move in your life, but he's not going to move until you start obeying him when it comes to tithes and offering. So trust him and stand out on faith that his word is true because it, but it, because it is. I am a living testimony. I am living in abundance of, of, of income because of the fact that God blessed me because of my obedience, because of my tithes, and because of my offering. God has no favorites. What he'll do for me, he'll do for you. He loves us both the same. Have a wonderful day, and may God continue to bless you.